Happy 2023, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are in the second week of January, episode 10 of season two of Tabletop Tuesdays. I'm one of your hosts, Curtis Anderson. <laughs> are we doing separate? Okay, I'm, I'm Dan. Hi, everyone. So you, good to you, see all of you. You threw me a, for a loop there. I You always introduce both of us. I really want to try and make this as, as inclusive as possible. I really want to start, uh, start making it so that uh, you and I together are... Uh, are are seen as people who participate in this show, oh, even dear. though we do. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, first of all, want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who is participating in the conversations that we're having, both mm -hmm. on the channel, uh, on Instagram, and with the YouTube Shorts. Um, I know our YouTube Shorts right now are completely dominated by sections of this show. Ideally, that's going to change, Dan, right? Yeah? Maybe? Yeah, maybe get some Mech Warrior shorts on the some, on some the docket. Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I ha I just don't. I have. It is such a foreign thing for me to even. Like you and I talked about this when I'm playing a game. It is a long form experience, and so it's really difficult for my brain to just slice out ten to thirty seconds of of something because I. I don't know. I, I think I, I can speak I for our on. audience. It is uh, one of my resolutions for the year for the channel is to figure out how to wrap my brain around what makes a good YouTube short because I don't, I don't, I watch lots of YouTube shorts to help train my brain. Mm. And very rarely do I see one that I actually like and feel like I got something out of. Ah. Uh. Well, most of, that most short of the form, time, that short form video in general. <laughs> most of the time, I feel like what what was the what what was the point of that? Okay, usually, okay, that's fair. Yeah. Usually, and that's that could just be me. I I don't know. Maybe I'm just a long form content kind of guy. I love reading books. Give me a 1,200 page Brandon Sanderson book, and I'm I'm as happy as a pig in expletive deleted. All right, all right. I, that's fair. That's fair. Um, so uh, teach me, somebody teach me how to make sh short form content. If you're if you're a shorts master, leave it in the comments below. What, what do you, what's your strategy? <laughs> I think I can speak for our entire audience when I say that if we got a montage of all the chicken the chicken McNuggets that got destroyed <laughs> with the chicken noise counter, I think uh, I think that would be an excellent short, and I think that would be our first one to go viral. Just a uh, because, running, a just running a running total. running total of how many chicken McNuggets get uh, get oh, taken out. Poor chicken McNuggets. By the way, if huh. uh, chicken McNuggets on a T-shirt sounds like a good idea to you, help us get to a thousand followers so we can start the Patreon and start doing our merch drops. Uh, but more importantly, Dan, uh, what are yeah. you drinking today? Uh, I, 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 I'm not drinking beer. I went with, I went with a nice Bailey's on the rocks here today. That's fantastic. That's fa It's a winter drink. I don't have, I'm out of eggnog. I've okay. gone to the grocery store two weeks in a row now and they have not had eggnog. There's just, well, it's past Christmas. So you don't get empty eggnog hole anymore. in the, yeah, but there's a hole there. Like. There should be egg. They're not filling it with something else. So that tells me they're they're leaving space for eggnog. But it's just not. They're not filling it with anything. Gonna get some Valentine's so, Day eggnog. So I, uh, I, yeah, I needed. I wanted something else. So Bailey's before I really got into eggnog. Bailey's Irish cream, neat, neat. Is that yeah? It's well, Bailey's. this is on the rocks, and but like yeah. I know mine's on the rocks. I'm telling a story, Curtis. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a procedure here. Act this is my one. Bad. Act two. Listen to the Hero's Journey podcast, Curtis. That might help you conceptualize all of this. I'm being a real irascible. Check the guy. link below. Being a real irascible guy today. Um, yeah, I've had a I've had a bad day today. So, oh no. Anyway, this is I usually drink Bailey's straight. I have it with ice today. So yes, you are correct. Well, that's on the rocks. Hashtag. Well, that's on the rocks. <laughs> A hole. Uh, what are you drinking? I. I <laughs> <laughs> it, 
in accordance with finishing out uh, winter selections. Are you drinking Arrogant Bastard? Uh, oh, oh, you're not. That's fair. That's you're fair. Uh, I am drinking Slayer again. Uh, I got one more six pack before oh, okay. it becomes unavailable. Right. So I'm drinking okay. Slayer today. And mm. uh, again, links to these beverages will be found down below. Um, <laughs> you don't need to link to Bailey's, I don't think. I think people know. <laughs> Look. What we you... link it so that people can check it out. We have international viewers. Uh huh. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. So what's going to happen is that Bailey's, their webmaster, is going to be looking at their their hits to their website, and they're mm -hmm. going to see that one was a link from this YouTube, and they're going to say, "Who? What's that?" And they're going to click mm -hmm. on it, and then they're going to a sub to the channel because it's going to be a gamer who really likes the content. But then they're going to they're going to offer us a, a sponsorship. I'm ready to take that sponsorship. I think we can do that. I will take a sponsorship from Bailey's Irish Cream. Absolutely. So Bailey's, reach out. Uh, we're very available uh, on on channel. Our email is there very as well available. as uh, as our Instagram link. So yeah. Uh, how was you said you were having a bad day? Normally yeah. this is when I would ask yeah. about your week, but I don't care about your week now. I want to hear about your day. Uh, it's been it's been a uh, it's been kind of a challenging week, really, all around. Mm -hmm. um, just you know skip right on uh, onto you and how how things are going <laughs> winter storm is was has how it's going mm. uh and uh uh before we shoot the before we record the show uh i like to take my dog arlo here's a picture of arlo i like to take arlo out for his afternoon stroll he used to mm. do a later afternoon where he'd do like three or four o'clock uh and so there are plenty of time to do the show and then take him out and it would be fine but because I live in the Pacific Northwest, and the sun sets at 4:30. Uh, we've been going out earlier and earlier. So, and with the storms that have been hitting the Pacific Northwest right now, and uh, specifically Portland, um, today I had to get him out real early because I wanted to be able to make our show time. But also, I don't know if you can hear it. It doesn't look like it's getting picked up by the mic. I'm not there hearing is... anything. There is just water. It's like somebody's standing outside with a hose spraying it on my window. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, there's some rain coming down. Um, it took a while for me to get the show up and running today because uh, I sent uh, this picture to Dan right before we were supposed to go on saying, I look like a drowned rat and I need to clean up. And now I look like this. You didn't look Powder that bad. fresh. Didn't look that bad. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't pretty, look that bad. I also had to dry the dog. You looked honest. Come on. <laughs> a little authentic. People don't people don't need us to have hair and makeup done. That's uh that's that's not what they're here for. Look, there was a time when I was a television personality. I would like to try and keep the aura of that at least a little bit left. Just a smidge. I understand. Just a hair. I understand. Yeah. Old habits. Yeah. Indeed. Ah. <sighs> Well, Dan, um, given the events of the day and everything that's going on, how about we jump right into our weekly progress? No games for okay. I did make a little bit of progress. Um, I don't know if you want me to share my photo. There's it's, a slideshow? It doesn't look like... Oh, all right, just show. Just let me do the thing. The oh wow, no, that's definitely look cleaner. Very, it doesn't look very different from the one I shared last week or two weeks ago. Um, but for the for the most part, the pauldrons are done. Not they done, look really not good. Done, done. What I mean by done is mostly tabletop ready. Yeah. I don't mean these are to my standards because they're not. But. The rims um, look like they're cleaned up a lot. The it, oh the eh, yeah yeah I'm I'm actually just seeing this one right now and that needs a lot of work as does the banner on the the name banner and, and mm. whatnot. But but anyway, um, there's progress done. It's just the little letterings like on the sabatons and on the chess pieces and on the weapons. Like I've got to get all that done. Obviously, this I don't I got to figure out what I want to do with the the flamethrower canisters here. Mm. Um. Is that is that a solid piece? Is that um, is that metal and metal? And then this in the center is a a clear thing where you can see how much promethium fluid you've got left in the 
in the cartridge. Uh, I'm trying to decide how I want to handle all of that stuff. But mm. it's just been such a ch- – I've been enjoying it when I can do it. But it's been a real challenge for me to uh, to paint these guys. Uh, and I I whinge about it every week. And so it's the same – it's the same issue, um, but that's that that will sneak into my goals for next week. So, uh, so that's what I've got, uh, Dan. For what it's worth, it le- you can legitimately see the progress that's happening here. This is not this oh, is not a carbon copy of the of the image that you had last week. Hmm. Um, also, you know, I think I think it's it's good to know that. Uh, I post our work in progress photos sometimes <laughs> on Instagram. I'm not super regimented about it, yeah. but uh, when I posted your last, the last one from uh, two weeks ago, that that got a really nice response. People really like to see work in progress images and mm. and uh, and the progress that you make. So make sure you send this over to me in the messaging system so that I can <laughs> show the progress of how things go. Oh, all right. Yeah, that well, looks really nice. They right. they're coming along. I'm looking really looking forward to uh plague clawing them and and uh just doing some just doing some damage. All right. There it is. I have Excellent. sent it in the messaging system. Fant- ah, I have received it. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Well, that's um, that's them so far. They're looking good. Progress is just painfully slow. Um it's it's uh, it, it takes a lot to play through two video games simultaneously and edit them and make sure videos are available every weekday. Well, minimum. Would a deadline help you? Uh, I don't know. Why are you about to give me a deadline? Is yeah. it a real deadline? Or are you faking? Is this, is this an no, this is deadline? legit. This oh is legit. gosh. Okay. All right. What? Yeah. We will be staying in Southern California for an extended period of time. What? And uh, Renee and I are coming down to SoCal for a while. Yes, I understand that. But it was yes. the the way you worded it. So it was very, very cryptic and like as though you're moving back to California or something. <laughs> we are at least going to be there for most of March and the beginning of April. So you have until wow. March 10th. What's that about? We will be in town from from late from like uh, March through the beginning of April, so you've got until March tenth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Throughout well, most of that month, I will be in Burbank quite a bit, so we can do we can do some missions. Do you have a job that's bringing you down here? Why are you going to be down here for six weeks? Um. <laughs> Or, or do you not want to say? Uh, I can't. Yet? I can't publicly say. Uh, okay. But uh, but I can tell you offline later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, look. You know, that two, three months from now ish. You've got what what equivocally works into. Yeah. Nine weeks. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, <laughs> I need to have these dudes done. You got nine weeks. Nine right. weeks, given given the amount yeah. of work that you actually have on your plate, is not as much time as it sounds. No, I know. That's yeah. I yeah. I mean, we've been doing this for ten weeks, and I've only I'm only as far as I am <laughs> with these dudes. So I I am under no illusions <laughs> as to how much time I have. Excellent. Um, what Excellent. Are, what's your progress report for the week? Uh, okay, so you're going to see a series of images right now that are of the first No Games for Old Men commission, which are the Shadow Elves for Mordheim uh, for my buddy Ian. And okay. uh, uh, I don't have the final approval on the scheme. Like, here's the scheme that we're going for. And here is the test scheme so far. Uh-huh. But I don't have his final approval on it yet, so it's not completely finished. As you can see, there aren't highlights on the cape yet or anything. The scabbard isn't complete. Uh, the hair is still just based. Like there's just there's still a lot to do. Uh-huh. But um, but I will be working I, I on like his hair color. Thank you, thank you. This did is you, actually did you model that on me. Is that me I... as a dark elf? <laughs> Shadow elf. Um, but uh, yes, this is this is Dan's. Uh, 
the mm. shadow elf mm. mm-hmm. with his etheric uh, etheric bow. The mm-hmm. bow magic isn't finished yet either. Man, that looks way better in person than it does on camera, but I want it to look good on camera, so I'm going to have to fix that up. So uh, next Man, I, week, I, I should pain. have images. What was that? Oh, okay. I said, yeah. I feel that pain. Yeah. Thinking something looks good until it, you see it on camera, and then it just doesn't. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. I'll... I am really enjoying uh, being able to kind of play with these. I I used to really not like the idea of painting something that I wasn't going to use because I I get a sense of pride and ownership over these things. Like, they become characters in my head. They become, uh, they get, you know, you, you get a connection with that. Yeah. And so... You know, it wasn't like a concern, but I was just a shade worried that when I started this commission, I'd be like, am I going to care? Um, <laughs> is, is it going to be one of those things where I like just slap it down and I'm like, oh, I'm going to let a bunch of things go. Da, 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 da. And then I got started on the test model. And I was like, no, no, this is just fun. This is just fun and relaxing. I just no actually pressure. enjoy doing it. <laughs> um, and the nice thing is, uh, worst case scenario, if, if. Ian likes it and I hate him. It doesn't matter. They're going back to his house. So yeah, it's good to go. I don't, I don't have to see him when I'm done. Unfortunately, I really like the way these are turning out. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to have to take lots of pictures and just be like, Oh, it's the one that I sent away. Uh So, uh, so yeah, so I've got, uh, uh, I've got 13 total to do 12 Mm -hmm. after this one is done and approved. And, uh, three of them are characters. Oh, and one of them is going to have uh, has a face mask, with what he's asked for is like a space thing on it uh, that looks similar to this picture. You can see it's like a galaxy nebula kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to do that one last after I've after I've gotten into the groove of painting all the other ones. Mm, okay. Yeah. 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 Neat. Yeah. So I'm excited. It's coming along. It's coming along, you know, not to, not to raise the stakes or anything, but I've, I've so far in these 10 weeks completed my kill team, uh, gotten some work done on some of my other troops and I'm um, getting a commission done. So, you know, that, just, just say it. Your compassion is overwhelming. <laughs> Man. Man, I can't wait till you start going blind, and then yeah. then we'll then we'll see how arrogant you are about how much painting you get done I, in a week. I use uh, I use this magnifying lamp, and uh, it's very very effective. Very effective. I'm about Helps to click end meeting. <laughs> <laughs> this close. <laughs> well, before before I uh, antagonize you into action, uh, what are your goals for next week? Well, funny you should have mentioned, arrogant bastard, the magnifying lamp. But that is that is my goal for this this week is to find one that I can put to use. Nice. I also I also need some new wet palette uh, parchment. Oh, okay. Because cool. I'm down to my last sheet and it is almost completely unusable now. Oh wow! So okay, I'm, just, I'm yeah finding little holes where there's no paint and just like squirting a little bit in there and trying to paint off of that and it's just it's uh I need a I need more palette paper. So. Uh, for what it's worth, um, I know that Geeky Tees carries the Army Painter wet palette, and I'm not saying you have to buy their version of the wet palette, but they have the uh, palette paper mm-hmm. refills. Yeah, and uh, also if it's the same if you're size, willing, then I can. Well, even if they're smaller, it's kind of nice. You can it can just kind of fit in there. Uh, mm-hmm. I use the Redgrass Games ones, and um, while Redgrass Games is not a a sponsor, I would love you to be Redgrass Games because I am a fan of the products that you produce. The wet palette that I have, I can seal for days when I don't have any painting, and I open it back up, and everything is good to go. Uh, and the palette paper they have is so great. Does now, it, one of the, it yeah. doesn't warp? No. The, what, the problem I'm having with my wet palette, and I mentioned this before too, is that the the paper will warp over time. Mm. And even even after wetting it, it it's just like 
and I, I'm using like baking parchment paper per your suggestion. That was an and... issue that I had with the parchment paper too before I before I bought a uh, a permanent one. Okay, so you're not having that problem with the red grass. Okay. Mm -hmm. What else do they make? You said you like their products. Plural. They, what else do they do? Uh, well, they first of all, they're famous for their series of palettes. So they have two different sizes of wet palette. Uh, the size that I have is their original small size. Uh, I would pick it up and show you, but it's full right now, and I don't want to spill it all over the place. Um, but uh, uh, I can show you. I can Google it. Don't don't worry about oh, it. Oh, even better. I mean, I there's going to be a link in the doobly doo. Yeah, there there is going to be a link, and yeah, uh, you know what? Just so you can see, here it is. Um, and maybe but, Geeky uh, Tees will have have it there too, so I can I can look at it. A it turns copy. out red grass isn't carried by a lot of stores, which kind of sucks. But they've got mm -hmm. uh, they've got two sizes of wet palette. Um, they've got uh, really cool like painting handles that rotate. Oh yes, and and hold. Uh, ah, and okay. They also have an oils glass palette that uh that you can you can use uh, i personally don't use oils and for my glass palette i actually use a white ceramic tile that i got back in mm -hmm. back in the day when that was the standard right um they have brushes as well but i don't know anything about that and they're advertising that they've got a new light for painting i also don't use that a light uh, but is yeah, there a magnifying like, lamp attached to it. It's not. It turns out I am one of the <laughs> few people that actually uses a magnifying lamp for my painting. Almost everybody else in the YouTube stratosphere Can see. who does some kind of painting, yeah, <laughs> yeah, or they wear glasses or you know whatever. But like they actually paint paint dry. Yeah, and uh, I just I can't do that. I gotta I gotta be magnified. Yeah, just, the reason I have been dragging it. my feet on the magnifying lamp is that. One time, you and I and I don't know who else got together at Dean's house, mm -hmm. and I tried your magnifying lamp, and I found it so disorienting. Oh, to really? Use. And I just didn't. I didn't in, like using it. I was not. I didn't feel comfortable using it. Basically, hmm. is what it comes down to. I didn't feel accurate. I, did, I didn't. It was. I don't know. I just couldn't wrap my head around the the juxtaposition of of my hand movements versus how close I was seeing them, and <laughs> it was bizarre. So it's I guess something I'm gonna have to get used to, or I just stop painting because I can't mm. I can't continue the way things are right now. Understood. Understood. Well, so, uh, for a very um, reasonable price, you can ship them up to Portland for the No Games for Old Men commission uh, system. And uh... <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have you paint my guys for me? <laughs> no, no. Just put targets on them. Yeah, and, you're uh, gonna do yeah. something <laughs> rude with them. You're gonna paint like little pacifiers in their mouths. And... No, no, I would never do that because that would require sculpting, and I'm not really good at that. Anyway, so goal is to acquire uh, a magnifying lamp this week. Yeah, yeah, nice. I don't think they're prohibitively expensive, and I got a little bit of uh, birth, uh, birth Christmas day. cash. Christmas cash, yeah, as uh, as a gift. So. I think I will use, invest, not invest, expend some of that as, well, it's an investment in my own ocular health. Yeah. And so it, in the I, channel. It would be an investment. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, cool. So cool, cool, cool. What about you? Uh, my goal is to get the, as I'm staring at it, my goal is to get the uh, test model approved by Ian and then assuming that happens tonight which i think it will or early tomorrow mm -hmm. then by next week i actually think i i'm gonna have all 10 of the regular guys done what and i'll be ready to move on to uh to to characters man that's the plan <laughs> that's the plan well the nice thing is they're block colors right so he's yeah, not that the, many sort of the great knights <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, Space Marines are not as simple as everybody thinks they are. Space Marines are a lot of flat surfaces. They are a lot of round surfaces. 
and it's difficult to make them look good without making them look like toys. It takes a lot. Mm. It takes a lot. Like, I know a lot of Space Marines, Stormcast, they're considered these starter armies that are supposed to be simple. And technically they can be. But yeah. if you really want them to look the way you want them to look, like, I don't want to say the word good, but if you want them to have the details that that you imagine and you want them to look like they are full-sized, not miniatures, then it takes it takes work to make that look good. Mm -hmm. I actually find humanoid, like flesh and cloth and things like that, to be a whole lot easier to paint them than, than the Space Marines. I can get through so many Imperial Guard models in the time that it takes me to get through two freaking Space Marines. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well. The edge highlighting alone takes me forever because I'm sloppy. So, hmm. you know, it's, I, I would not be berating yourself on this. Uh, <laughs> Space Marine armor is deceptively difficult to actually get done to the standard I know you expect for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is the, that might be something I need to let go of is the, the standard that I have recognize that I'm still trying to paint to redevelop the skill that I used to have mm. and I'm not mm. there yet. So <clears throat> that's why I paused on full completion of my orc commandos. Mm. They're mm. mostly done. They're tabletop ready, but uh, they're not done done. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're done. So they're still sitting downstairs on my, on my painting station. Cause I want to work on them more. Yeah. But going to have to see first before I can do that. So I, that's, that's why, that's why this week's goal is to get a magnifying lamp because it, it, if it doesn't solve the problem, then I move on to a, another solution. But if it solves the problem, then I can stop finally complaining about, I can't see, I can only paint five minutes at a time. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, which has been well, my complaint be for the last six six weeks. So, um, it's and the other thing is, you don't want to admit that this is happening to you. Yeah. You know, I've had perfect yeah. vision my entire life until this past year. Yeah. And then suddenly, it's like, oh, I can't see anymore. So. Folks, there's a reason this channel is called is... No Games for Old Men. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there, you don't want to admit that I don't want to admit that that is going on and, and therefore I need a a solution to it. It's just I kept tricking myself. As, oh, my eyes are just tired because I'm looking at a computer screen all day. And that may be part of it, but on days when I don't look at a computer screen all day and I still can't see, then, you know, okay, it's, it's time to, time to face facts and do something. Get some, get some Rite Aid readers. Yep. 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 Well, yeah. folks out there, uh, you know, I know from our analytics that a majority of our viewers are over the age of 35. So let us know in the comments how you are doing with your hobby as uh, as aging has progressed. Are are you having the same kind of issues? Yeah. Is yeah. it or is it worse? Is it like after years and years of mouse use, your painting hand is now like. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like what's, what what uh... magnification are your right aid readers? <laughs> Drop a comment below. <laughs> Let me know I'm not alone. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our weekly progress. You know, this is the first time in a few weeks when we've gotten a chance to be able to put out some solid goals and uh, and log, log some solid progress. And, uh, you know, the holidays Good really do put a dent in all, all that information, all that work. They just come along and take that, take that uh, motivation right out. Too many other things to do. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 about it's it's priorities. Yeah. You know, your your priorities for that holiday week are to.
go out and do stuff and see people. Yeah. You could say, nah, I can't tonight. Sorry. I've got a project I'm working on <laughs> that I need to get done for Wednesday. I have a deadline. I have a deadline. So, you know, but that's not that's not the choice. Yeah. That gets made. Well, now it's time to talk about other tabletop things. No games for Dan, lots of people are entering into gaming, tabletop gaming, and hobbying for the first time right now. A lot of people have gotten starter sets for for the holidays. Uh, a lot of folks are gearing up with new codexes, new versions of games, experimenting with new games. And while games are very, very... Uh, in and of themselves are important. There is a key element that every gamer has to consider, whether video, tabletop, board, whatever you play. And that is snacks. <laughs> How many times snacks. has your gaming session been ruined because you got nacho cheese Doritos instead of Cool Ranch or Taco Doritos. <laughs> How many times have you lost a game because you were not fueled right. with the right uh, with the right snack food? Yeah, if you're hungry, you're not thinking clearly. If you're not thinking mm -hmm. clearly, you're not strategizing. M mistakes get made, and the next right. thing you know, you've got an entire group of Orc Scar Boys charging your Land Raider and turning it into tinfoil. So, Dan, we have a history with snacks uh, through through our gaming life. Yeah. Um, starting when we were teenagers and had stomachs and lower GI tracts that were made of steel, um, what were right. some of your favorite, as we were coming up in gaming, sitting around Scott's table and uh, d and Ding, cyberpunking, shadow running, gerping? Well, I remember two major elements of our uh, snack schedule, and and that was Pepsi, mm -hmm. and what were at the time Gino's pizza rolls. I believe they are Totino's pizza rolls now. They but, are. They are indeed. But Gino's pizza rolls, and this was before our bodies began to rebel against us for the punishment of inserting gallons of Pepsi Cola and metric tons of Gino's pizza rolls. For a little bit of context for everybody out there, in the early 90s, Pepsi created something called the Pepsi Cube. And the Pepsi Cube was a 24 case of cans, of 12 ounce cans of Pepsi. And we would buy four of them and go through them in a weekend. Well, Scott's mother would buy four of them, right? Let's let's give credit where it's due. Well, credit there. is due. Scott's mom fueled our Dungeons and Dragons weekends. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, <laughs> Cheer, yeah. Cheers to Bonnie. <laughs> cheers to Bonnie on that. <laughs> Glasses up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, the amount of Pepsi that we drank was, I, I want to say criminal. It's amazing we have teeth, it was, frankly. It was definitely unhealthy. Yeah. Um, For a long time, I didn't know that the syrupy feeling in the inside of my mouth wasn't normal. <laughs> there was just kind of a layer of Pepsi syrup that, that coated the entire inside of my mouth for a disgusting, few years. Disgusting, Curtis. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's gross. It's gross. It's gross. Um, and the pizza they make rolls. Toothbrushes, you know. That, I use them. Thing. Those it's just thing. that it's just that you know we consumed a we really lot. Uh, really there did. is a distinct memory that I have. When you were a junior in high school, 
and you were running a lot. Don't tell a story about me without my authorization. No, no, no. You're going to appreciate this. Um, you got a glass of water and the rest of us were like, what are you doing drinking water? What's wrong with you? Have a Pepsi. And you were like, <laughs> guys, I need to have some water. I, I want to have a, a glass of water for every Pepsi that I have. I've and we were we were just so upset that you would upset the balance of not taking down some caramelized colored soda with the rest of us at the <laughs> at the frequency we did. It uh, and I, I remember you just I had being a track like, meet guys, the next day. I, I couldn't I fill up drink on. Water. <laughs> and the Geno's pizza roll were my carbo load. So oh my lord, those pizza rolls, man! I am. I still, I can still taste them. I can still yeah. taste them. Yeah. They came in a, they came in a 40 bag. This came Something. in a giant bag, 40. Yeah. Tear them open, toss them on a, uh, on a, on a cookie sheet. On a baking tray and stick and then, them in the oven. Couldn't just stick them in the oven. Cause remember we had to put them an inch apart. Had to put them an inch apart, <laughs> inch apart, inch apart because they'd explode. <laughs> And you wanted to have space for them to explode so that they wouldn't splash on each other. Who cares? And we cared! Who <laughs> cares? Wow. I have had Pepsi recently. It and, tastes different, right? And I have had pizza rolls. You did Not, that? When I say recently, I mean within the last few years. I okay. think the last time when we would play Dungeons and Dragons at Scott's house as adults. I'm talking about within the last five years. Decade. Before <laughs> before COVID. How long have you been in Portland? Uh, over five years now. Okay, so between five and ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, he got some pizza rolls. Because it was, it was like, hey guys, remember this? I remember and that. all of us were like, oh my god, these are terrible. Not only that, but I was wrecked the next day. <laughs> I was not okay the next day. That was part of it. Uh, not yeah. that they tasted terrible. It's just they weren't our, we did not metabolize them as well as we used to. Mm -mm. And I feel mm -mm. that way about Pepsi too. I've had Pepsi uh, recently just out of curiosity because I used to drink it all the time. And I can't remember the last time I had a soda, like for real. Mm -hmm. And it is just ridiculously sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's cloying. It's, I don't even like it anymore. It's uh, so. actually the reason that Pepsi could beat Coke in the Pepsi challenge. Because for small doses, because it's sweeter, your body takes to it faster. But in larger doses, it uh, it doesn't like it as much. Okay. And so when they would do the Pepsi challenge and give like a Dixie cup size, two ounces for you to taste to see if you liked it better. Uh -huh. For those who don't know, the Pepsi challenge was something, it was a marketing idea from Pepsi where they would do commercials where they would have uh, somebody at a grocery store and they'd be like, here, try this and tell me which one you like better. And then they'd be like, oh, you picked Pepsi, not Coke, because Coke was the number one cola in the world at the time. Still is. I think it still is. But uh, uh, but yeah, so taking the Pepsi challenge was, uh, turns out it was a loaded dice game where... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they were sweeter made it so that small doses made them more desirable. Mm. Yeah, okay. okay. Hashtag trivia fact. Today, however. Yes. My choice of snacks is very different. What is your choice of snack, and Daniel? Not only is it designed to be better for me. But also tidier, mm, cleaner, mm, mm. less less need for napkins to soak the, the pizza roll grease off your fingers. <laughs> uh, and and that is usually like uh, uh, veggies and maybe some ranch dip. I have found that veggie trays have become very popular uh, for us since we were in our mid 30s. Cheese and fruit. I'll cut up. I'll get. I'll get a uh, two or three different little cheese blocks at the grocery store, and some grapes and an orange, 
and uh, strawberries. And that is, those are my gaming snacks these days. And the cleanliness part is important because now 99.9% of my gaming is sitting at a computer with a mouse and a keyboard. And I don't right. need pizza roll grease dripping into my keyboard and causing stickage and all kinds of nastiness. So, yeah. you know, a, a little carrot stick isn't going to cause that problem. So uh, it's, it's, it's about personal health. It's about the health of my peripherals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Big difference. And for beverage, it's either water or I am probably drinking uh, a glass of beer or a wine of some mm. kind. Uh, mm. Occasionally, occasionally I'll go with something harder like a whiskey. Mm. Mm. If we're if we're playing GTA as a group, then uh, like like you said, hard crime, hard liquor. Yep. Yep. So. Good times. Good times. <laughs> Uh, when you go to uh, when you go to the pub and you're playing with John and Michelle, do you um, what do you do there? Do you snack there too? Well, usually we eat first. Mm, mm, mm. But it's probably a salad. If I know we're not gaming, I might get a burger because then I Word. can get then I can get crap on my hands and not worry about it. Nice. If we're not eating anything, then I'm probably getting some steamed edamame. Oh, oh, nice. Which is just very easy, very simple, very clean. Yeah, and, if anything, I just yeah. don't feel like a pox walker at the end of it. When I buy the salad, I'm done. Solid. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, like you, I distinctly remember that. 80% of our diet was Pepsi and Gino's pizza rolls uh, from what? 1991 to 1997. That sound about right. No, no. Was it longer? No. <laughs> <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> well, you're You're in the ballpark. Sure. It's, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I remember it was in the apartment that we started to switch over to alcohol as opposed to Pepsi. So, mm. so around 97. Maybe 91 to 96. <laughs> and then uh, also, Bonnie was not just the purveyor of Pepsi and pizza rolls, but also would grab a variety of delightful prepackaged food things from Costco, which used to be... I forgot what Costco was called before, but anyway, everybody knows Costco. Wasn't it called... Uh, Co it wasn't called Costco? It wasn't Costco. It was uh, Price Club. Price Club became Costco? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So or if uh, I anyway. did, I forgot. Uh, when it comes down to it, the other distinct snack that I remember getting whenever we were gaming were uh, the mini pizzas. Mm hmm. The ones you would cook in the oven that uh, I actually those. still buy. They're square now instead of circles. Um, Totino's, right? Totino's Pizza? Uh, they make the pizza rolls, so it stands to reason they would make flat yeah, pizzas too. Same, yeah, same. Uh, but they also had... She got these single-serving packaged beef jerkies that were stupid good to my 16-year-old mouth. I still remember them. And I remember hoarding them Whenever we would go over to Scott's house, especially when we were in our X-Wing phase, there was sev there were several years where we all traded off playing computer games mm -hmm. at Scott's house. And the game that all of us enjoyed, there were several games that got played, but the one that all of us enjoyed and like fought for turns on was X-Wing when it right. first got released. So I remember waiting my turn, watching you do a, a convoy mission, <laughs> and I would just be ripping through these like three inch long beef jerkies while I was waiting. They were so good. Wow, I don't think I remember those. They Well, I don't know that you ever got one because uh, <laughs> when I knew they were in the house, I would keep them to myself. 
I remember uh, Scott was like, if you eat all those, you're going to die. And I was like, I'm dying happy then. <laughs> and do you remember when we used to uh, make Bobley pizzas at Jeff's house? I remember Bobley's ha- pizzas, yeah. I don't remember where they were. Oh, okay. Well, I, I distinctly remember making, especially in the early days when he first got me involved in the D&D group. Hmm. That was before me, so I would, yeah. Making the Bobbly pizzas with the Bobbly thing, the Bobbly crust, and the Bobbly sauce, and then craft cheese, and then just slapping <laughs> oh, some Hormel pepperonis on that, uh-huh. and then cooking them <laughs> in the oven yeah. for like 20 minutes. Were they wow. good? No. No, I didn't really like them back then either. They were serviceable. But but they did the job. They did the job. They filled you up. They filled you up. And man, oh man. And I was... wonder why we all had acne. Right. <laughs> uh, but like yourself, my my diet habits have significantly changed since I was 16 years old. And uh, uh, now... I actually don't like to eat that much when I game, period. I like to do it before or I like to do it after. Um, When before when pre pandemic was happening, uh, I used to game at Guardian Games weekly with friend of the channel, Nelson, and we would do Kill Team 18 every week. And there's a food truck outside of of uh, of the store. And they had some of the best chicken tenders I've ever had. Now, I know chicken tenders in general. Uh, gamer fuel uh, for most tabletop gamers. In fact, I think the Trapped Under Plastic guys, they like to go to Kane's Chicken after every recording of their show. Um, but I've never had a chicken tender as good as Grandma's Chicken Tenders at outside Guardian Games. They're greasy and mm. uh, and not so greasy, juice. not so greasy <laughs> that they get all over your hand. But like, I would have to eat them before we played, have enough time to wash my hands because I didn't want to touch my minis yeah. with chicken hands. Oh, yeah. Uh, I also appreciate a good vegetable tray. Uh-huh. I know we had a lot of those yeah. when we were still playing D&D live before, uh, before for the move. Right. Uh, and, uh, chips. I do like the occasional mini bag of chips, but it can't be a big bag of chips because that's too many chips. It needs to be a single serve size bag. bag. That's a waste of time. It's the right amount of chips. You're overpaying for chips then. If you're, if you're buying mini bags, you're just wasting your money. I get a big bag. And little sandwich bag Ziplocs and pour as many chips as you want into the little sandwich bag. Take the sandwich bag to your game with you. And that's your, that, that is your homemade mini bag of chips. And you've spent a fraction of the percent for those chips per chip cost to ingestion value is much better. And that's life hacks with Dan. (laughs) That's a new segment. Uh, I will not eat if we are doing something, if we were doing an online game, mm. Re- regardless of whether it's video games like like GTA or The Division that we'll play sometimes right. together, or if we're playing Dungeons & Dragons or GURPS or something like that. I will not, I'll, I'll have a beverage, but mm-hmm. I will not eat food because we're all on microphones and we don't need, there's just something about hearing the sound of someone eating through your headphones. That is way different than being in the same room with someone and hearing someone chomping on peanuts. That's tolerable. Right. But when it's, (laughs) that's the wrong kind of ASMR. That is just intolerable and uh we tease old man jeff about his 
misophonia yeah with with that but uh uh he's an offender as well so oh 100 uh, yeah w- yeah nobody's clean I'm calling I'm, call, I'm called him out personally I am now publicly shaming you you might want to cut this <laughs> <laughs> Look, sometimes we're all loud eaters. <laughs> um, Renee also. But that's suffers. why I won't. I will yeah. not eat on on mic. Yeah, not going to do it because I'm sensitive to that, and I want to be respectful of people who are sensitive to that. Well, I also feel like playing online is a little bit different. When we were sitting around a table, it was a more communal experience where where eating as an activity is kind of almost expected, you know. It was, it was, it was a social, right? Not that playing yeah. online isn't social, but it feels more like let's get down to business when we're playing online, whether that yes. be video games or, or a role-playing game or whatever, it's a as lot opposed less to run around. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, but we miss fighting for the last Gino's pizza roll. That became such a thing that old man Jeff wrote a scene into one of his college student films about it. I do not remember that. What? Yeah. I mean, the the scene that Jeff wrote. I don't remember him writing that. Really? You're yeah. in it. All of us are in it. We're in the scene. We played ourselves. Uh, I believe and you. you are the 100%. one who sold the last pizza roll. You don't remember? Like, we're all laying down on the floor. We filmed it in your room, I thought. And on in the city we used to live in <laughs> when we were going in, to high school. In the DB house? And or no. At my parents' house? Yeah. No way. Okay, I really I don't remember thought, this. I thought so, because you were still you were still living there. Nobody or, lives or you there were anymore. Back yeah. to live there. You were living there again or something. Anyway. But yeah, there was a, a he had a, a top down shot of the bowl and one last pizza roll in it, and then you reach in and grab it, and then he's got a close up of your mouth going, Ow. and then we all pile on you and beat the hell out of you. You don't remember that? You have no memory of that. No memory of that. God, what drugs were you on back then? Quite a few. <sighs> yeah, it's a thing. Ask Jeff about it. Okay. I'm sure he still has a copy. I'm sure he's got a digital copy of what was it? The Wall of Sound? Is that the name of the movie? Wall yeah. of Sound. Mm-hmm. It's the, he won the uh, best non-verbal storytelling award. It's at, an award-winning film, and I don't yes, remember this. And you're in it. Good grief. Okay. It's yeah, not on your no, resume. Fine. Unbelievable. It is not unbelievable. Clearly, I should put it on there. Uh, wow. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I guess I'm glad I got the last pizza roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> you might have gotten the last pizza roll multiple times because we might have had to shoot that more than once. Yeah, and I, I doubt we had a spit bag. Oh. Yeah, that's what you normally do for like a food commercial so you don't end up eating like 400 chicken nuggets. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you take a bite, wow. you spit. Yeah. It's like the poor guy who was uh who played the uncle in uh Napoleon Dynamite. Uncle Rico. Yeah. He was a vegan. But there's yeah. that scene where he eats an almost raw steak. Yeah. He had a spit bag. Yep. Cuz he had to put it in his mouth and chew on it while he's talking. Yep. yep. And then he'd go <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's standard regardless, but uh, a lot of people don't know that about the entertainment industry is Mm-mm. that uh, people don't eat. <laughs> no, and I feel really bad for the uh, production assistants who have to stand there and hold the bag while... Somebody... Normally, no, nobody should be holding that bag except for you. It's Long normally just it. off to the side out of camera shot, and then you could just bring it in. <laughs> put it away. Oh, yeah. uh, Wow. Okay. All right. So, audience, <laughs> again, I know a lot of you are our age, so how are you doing? How's your lower GI tract? How are you treating it? Are you all cup of noodle still? <laughs> are you all cup of noodle and pizza? Or are you? Uh, oh, have you gone to noodles. tofu and veggies? Um, 
Let us know what you think about snacks and your games. Or do you even snack for games anymore? I know for miniatures players, there's a reason why we don't eat greasy foods. I don't oh, want no. to rub the paint off. No, 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 no. So yeah, tell us about tell us about your eating habits, and uh, let's have a discussion about it. And that, my friends, is other tabletop things. And you always have a cap on your drink. Always have a cap on your drink. Always. Water bottles have lids. We do not have, we do not do open containers. Thank you very much. I mean, I have an open container, but it's got a much smaller mouth. And I'm not at a game. We're not mini zing right now. That is, that is something nice about everywhere in Portland is that everybody's got beer on tap. So it's kind of nice. Although I get real, <laughs> I lose my, uh, my, competitive edge after a beer so instead i'll just be like you know it seems like a good idea let's just charge that thing and see what happens <laughs> <laughs> you start experimenting <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometimes that's paid off really big i'm sure the most of the time my way this time yep yep that's gotten me in trouble in vegas Rats. yeah bacchus got me again <laughs> yeah <laughs> well dan we're now coming to uh, a, a, a really solid section for this week for me, and that is oh. what we're hyped about. No games for old Can I go first? I would like you to go first. I'm claiming a bye week. Oh! I... Nothing excited me this week. I didn't hear any news. <laughs> there was no news. I didn't do anything. I finished The Witcher Blood Origin, but I talked about that last week, and my opinion hasn't changed. I really liked it. And, and the little person dwarf chick with the Warhammer was awesome, and she continued to be awesome throughout the entire the rest of the show. But beyond that, I, I didn't hear anything else gaming related that I got stoked about. And uh, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm claiming a buy. Okay. Well, is there anything non gaming related you got excited about? <laughs> is there not anything, really. is there anything in, in the world right now not, that you're like, not really? I, yeah, no. No, I like I said, it's been a rough. Uh, I've had a, I've had kind of a rough week. So I, okay, I think if, if I may have heard something that, you know, had it been a different week, I might have been a little more excited about. But, uh, yeah, I, my attention has been elsewhere, mm. so I didn't really, I didn't really uh, find a whole lot this this week to, you know, it's the new year. So maybe next week news will come out at the beginning of the year that will that will uh, spin my beanie, but, but yeah, this time, not so much. All right. I'm a little disappointed. Hey, I feel you on that. Um, but you've got something that you were very excited about. I have something that I'm excited about uh, to the point where I think it makes up for your lack of hype. That's why I wanted to go first. When I was first putting together the show notes for the build, I had just gotten something in the mail that I was pretty excited about. And that was the Battletech starter box. Nice. Which okay. we will be doing an unboxing for. This is still in cellophane. I was going to say, it's still wrapped in plastic. And I got the Lance expansion. Okay. That has the Marauder 2 in it, which right. as I've discussed in multiple locations now, is uh, one of my favorite mech, uh, mech designs ever. But then, Games Workshop released released a video of things that are coming in 2023. Okay. In this video, we got this image. Do you know what that image is, Dan? I don't. I don't know. It's red and black. That's the Adeptus Arbides, Dan. Beep, beep, beep. 
There is no, there's no way for you to know that. There is, in fact, no way because yesterday, yesterday, they released the muster rules for boarding actions mm. where they specifically mention the Adeptus Arbides and uh, several of their specific uh, rankings and names in the rules. Okay, all right. So it looks like we're getting an Adeptus Arbides kill team and my heart is all a flutter, all a flutter. Well, you We've better finish talked... those shadow elves fast, then. So no that, kidding. So that no day kidding. one you can rip Dude, that it, box open. People were excited about the Casterkins. I have not been so excited about buying a box of freaking plastic as I was when I saw that this was coming. The Adeptus Arbides are one of my favorite designs ever. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it a little bit on the show before. A lot of it. Where, uh, uh, you know, back in the 80s, Games Workshop had the license to do Judge Dredd. They lost the license, but they were like, you know, a Judge Dredd kind of police force is pretty great. How about we add that to 40K? And they did. And it became the Adeptus Arbides. And the helmet design, the armor design... For a while, they were in Necromunda, but it didn't make sense. One of the things that people don't get right about the Adeptus Arbides lore is that they aren't a police force. They're not like... That's what the Enforcers are. That The Enforcers and the Arbides were based on... <laughs> they were England's take on American police brutality. So they're overly militarized, uh, overly armed... They've got tanks, <laughs> but um, standard but <laughs> as the lore expanded, it's, it's become, they're the Imperial police. So an American analogy would be more like they're the FBI with better body armor. So enforcers are like your local police force. And and uh, the Adeptus Arbides are are the FBI, where they're judge, jury, and executioner with <laughs> armor. <laughs> what? Because they handle imperial law, not local law. So you know, it's like federal law versus state law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And they do it with big shields and shock malls. And I feel like. Uh, uh, <laughs> as the distinction between those two things have kind of come, people kind of forget that for a while, the Adeptus Arbides, especially in the old fluff, were the first line of any defense against anything. So if there was a rebellion, it wasn't necessarily the planetary defense force that was coming to the aid, because sometimes the planetary defense force was, was the one causing the rebellion. So the ones <laughs> who would be there to put it down would be the Adeptus Arbides, because they'd be like, oh, you're guilty of being against the Imperium, so let's go get them. <laughs> okay. And uh, the fact that we've got... They don't make a good army. They're not an army. So they've, they've never really been able to expand onto the uh, 40K stage. Right. But they make a great kill team. Yeah, they make it a sounds great like it kill be. team. It sounds like so, it. So, yeah. So I am stoked so stoked i can't wait for that box i am literally putting quarters away on a daily <laughs> basis so that i'm saved up and can just buy the box when it comes out i'm i am so excited i am so, that so was excited just a teaser right we don't know anything about a, a release window there are rumors um that okay. it's going to um, come out in the last quarter box Okay. But, um, and the rumors, bear in mind, there are two different kinds of Games Workshop rumors. There are, uh, leaks that I am very confident that Games Workshop puts out through their secret channels. Um, and they do it through a few different YouTubers as well. Um, Chapter Master Varlak is a pretty solid source for these things. He has a connection somewhere and I'm pretty sure it's the studio that mm -hmm. will actually release like years worth of stuff. And the last one has been 100% accurate so far, but didn't mention this. Uh, and then 
Uh, and then there are the other leaks, which are the things that are made up, and you'll find those usually on, on forums. But they're pretty easy to tell the difference between. Games Workshop will sometimes release an image and try and blur out what's in the background, or they use their potato cam, as they call it, mm -hmm. which uh, uh, it just means it's a bad photo. Mm -hmm. um, and the cynical side of me wants to be like, that is 100% a marketing team who knows how to build hype and FOMO yeah. to get you ready for this. Right. Uh, but this, this, uh, this trailer, which will be linked down below, is straight up just like, this is what's coming in 2023. Look at these cool shapes. You can kind of fit. You can see what they are. You can yeah. see what they are. Like there's a new Primaris Marine coming out with a cool new gun and backpack and stuff. Like all that's fine and good. It's reliable to expect that, uh, that the final box for this kill team season will contain Adeptus Arbides. But if they come in one of the, in the next one, as opposed to the last one, I won't be upset. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Do I have three boxes of uh, 40k terrain that still need to be built, regardless of even being painted? Yes. Is one of those the uh, Into the Dark box set? Absolutely, it is. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'm ready. I'm ready for another box because oh. I will. I haven't put together my Octarius uh, minis yet because I have been playing with the other ones that I already had. I will ignore everything else. I will build the Arbides, and even though. I love I I I love the Arbides that I've built for myself out of mm -hmm. my little scout rules and everything. Yeah, uh, they will they will get retired and uh, the new Arbides will come out and play. You're gonna retire them? Uh, not completely, but like you're I'm gonna, ready. I'm ready to play Arbides. You're gonna line them I'm up so ready. on the road and just out and, and just with a magnifying glass just melt them down run them over melt them down into pvc and and uh <sighs> re, re sculpt them dude i'm ready i'm I stoked i can't wait it's been yeah no i'm 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 stoked that you're stoked it's been decades since we've gotten actual arbides minis because the last time we got anything close the first round came out in the late 90s and they were super decorated that had like an eagle helmet and and shock it. I'll post some pictures here. Um, <laughs> but then when the second version of Necromunda was released, they released Enforcers because the lore masters over at Games Workshop were like, it doesn't make sense that the Imperial law enforcement that is responsible for Imperial law between like the Mechanicus and the Ministorum and like they handle Imperial cases. Why would they go into the Underdark or the Underdark <laughs> a mix of systems? <laughs> Why would they go into the uh, Underhive? Uh -huh. And so they were decided that the planetary enforcers model themselves on the Adeptus Arbides and or Arbides and uh, uh, and they're the ones who are actually down in the sump going after the gangs. And so that created this, this split. Okay. Uh, so we haven't had real Arbides models since like 1998. How mad are you going to be if that teaser ends up being just an enforcer? You've seen the, the shape of the helmet, all? right? <laughs> I won't. I won't. If it if it ends up being like a remodel of the Enforcer, like that's not bad. That's still one of my favorite model kits. Like I just uh -huh. like the look of those anyway, uh, which is why I've built entire squads around them and I just keep painting more of them up. Yeah, but that's not what it looks like. That uh -huh. that image is the clear. head shape is pretty distinct. Okay. Uh, the armor is pretty distinct. The shock shield and shock mall looks pretty solid. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. Good. I'm stoked. Yeah. And, and depending on how things go and when this is released, because if it is in the next box, that would be, oh, that's next month. That could be, that could be right in March, right before we come. Or even while we're there in Southern California, um, you might you might uh, 
uh, have to fight against a bunch of gray plastic Arbides. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no tournament rules. Yep. Not yep. necessary. Yep. So yeah. And so that, that, yeah. Because I read uh, Gray Knights by Ben Counter, I fully understand why a Gray Knights kill team would be doing battle against another Im- Imperial unit. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Now yep. I get it. Yep. Did you finish uh, any of those other books yet? Of the trilogy? The other t- No, not yet. No, I've been reading other things, but it will be done. Well, that's what we're hyped about. So what are you hyped about? Let us know. This is a conversation we want to keep on going, and and, uh, we want to be excited about what you're excited about. Yeah, help me get excited about something. What did I miss this week that I can be excited about? You don't get to take a bye. I'm talking to the viewer, not to you, Curtis. Oh, I was like... I'm talking to viewers. Viewers like you. (laughs) <laughs> dan we succeeded huh. in recording yet uh-huh. another another episode yep. of tabletop tuesday feel like this was a good one felt smooth good felt 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 golden uh for those of you who are watching, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, help us get to that 1,000 subscriber mark. That's when we start the Patreon. That's when you start seeing Chicken McNugget, uh, McNugget uh, t-shirts available, posters. Are we going to have a copyright problem calling it a Chicken Mech Nugget? No. No, yeah, I don't think. No? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, okay. It's not the same. All right. Yeah. <laughs> not the same. It's not a food. I think we, I think we could even trademark it. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget that we do Mech Warrior Mondays every Monday, and we live chat with all of you when it's released at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We've really been enjoying that. That mm-hmm. is a great little live chat community that's growing right now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we really enjoy chatting with you guys. So so keep up keep up the good work. Uh, uh, you've given us such good advice and admittedly I don't play, but <laughs> Scott and Jeff and Dan have all really taken your advice to heart. And, uh, as you've seen with Jeff, man, he's, he's turned around. He's, he's, uh, yeah. he's been a, he's been a killer. He's been mm-hmm. a straight mech killer. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we are, we are very far ahead in terms of recording Mm. though like it takes several weeks for things that we've recorded to actually air so my concern is that people are like oh you should do this you should do this you should do this and like four weeks go by and we haven't done it yet because we haven't recorded yet right we haven't (laughs) caught up yet to that so don't don't get mad we're there's a delay just like tv (laughs) i swear they're learning i swear I swear. It's really neat. It's really really neat to see it going. I I am, you know, waiting to get target lock before I fire my LRMs. I've learned that. Hopefully, hopefully that is on display in the the, the most recent videos. I think it was the last, the last episode, uh, Uh, which would have been two weeks ago, by the way, by the time you see this, where you and Scott were just doing long range missiles and like, Oh, tag yeah. teaming that oh, one yeah. mech that one that was guy. awesome yeah 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 he was trying to jump jet out and you guys were just like nope kept him down <laughs> that was great and also i'm really glad to see that more people are picking up on vampire because vampire is getting real good right now mm-hmm. if you watch the episode that came out on uh on uh, the 4th of january whoo things are getting sticky <laughs> Things are getting sticky. Which that story's that? getting deep. Uh, that's when Dr. Reed went to the Ascalon Club. Oh, oh, we're, yeah, for the first yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like we're in Act 3 of that story. It it does it feel like you're getting close to done. Really feels like this is the, we're approaching the end game now. Yeah. I don't know. Which is weird, too, because I would expect you to be, at, like, I would think that you would need to be at a higher level to be as far as you are but I'm it's also that good i don't need to be high level i'm you've seen me play 
Right? <laughs> I have. <laughs> Somebody forgets he has guns quite a bit. Uh, but uh... <laughs> And yet, still successful. Still successful. Still After successful. a couple of attempts. <laughs> but still successful. I learned. But, oh, and one of the things that came up in those comments are, uh, does anybody know the Uh-oh. the folk, is, is there a folklore connection between the names of the different vampire types in Vampire, Ekon, Skull, hmm. Volkold, Volkold? Volkod. Volkod. Because um, we can't, we we haven't done a tremendous amount of research, but in the light Googling that we've done, we, we don't see a connection. So any of you vampire hounds out there, is, is there something we're missing? Is there something that we, we should be picking up on? Let us know in the comments. Uh, but now I feel like I'm rambling. Dan, have a wonderful week. <laughs> you too. Good luck finding that magnifying lamp. If you're uh-huh. looking for a magnifying lamp, there's a link in the doobly-doo. Mm-hmm. And we will see you next Tuesday. Now, <laughs> <laughs>